Hi friends, my name is Bhavya Mangla. I am IATF qualified rotor doing audit for the automotive sector for the last 18 years. I am again back with another interesting topic. What is the key difference between recommended action which is as per FMA 4th edition and optimization which is FMA 1st edition by AIG and BDA. So when we talk about recommendation, you know, you can think about any medical test report which you have just done and then you go to a doctor to show him that particular report that what the doctor thinks about it. So maybe after looking into the report, doctor may say that everything is fine, nothing needs to be done. Maybe the doctor may say that you need to do some more tests or maybe you take some medicine and after three months we will again have some more tests. So that is some recommendation what is given by the doctor. Something similar is happening in FMEA with respect to recommended action also. So in this particular video, I'm going to talk about what are the seven different stages of FMEA, then what is the failure change, what about severity, occurrence and detection, what is preventive action, detective action, then I will talk about what is priority and then in the last, the key difference between recommended action as per FMEA 4th edition and optimization as per FMEA 1st edition. And in the last, I'm going to talk about the key challenges that industry is facing with respect to FMEA. So, to start first with the definition of FMA. So when we talk about FMA, basically it's a team oriented, systematic, qualitative and analytical method to identify, analyze and mitigate the technical risk related to production and the manufacturing process design. One very important thing about FMA is that it is before the event, not after the event. And there are seven key steps in the FMA as per first edition. If I talk about all the seven steps, the first step is with respect to planning and preparation. The second one is about structural analysis. Third one is about functional analysis. The fourth one is about failure analysis. The fifth one is risk analysis. The sixth one for which this particular video is made, optimization. And the last is about result and how we are documenting that. So when we talk about failure chain, so failure chain consists of three key parts. The first one is failure mode, then failure effect and the failure cause. So if you look into the picture, you will find that failure mode is in the center and failure mode is affecting both the failure effect as well as the failure cause. And once we are clear about the failure chain, then it becomes very easy to understand and identify which is the severity, occurrence and detection ranking. So how to give the ranking from 10 to 1. And once that is being done, then we can decide about the preventive action and the detections which at the moment maybe organization may be having or they can think about it. And based on that, maybe earlier it was RPN, risk priority number and now it is called action priority that can be decided. So once that is done, that comes the step number six that is optimization as per FMA first edition or recommended action as per FMA fourth edition. So now I'm going to talk about the key difference between the older version and the new version, although the differences are very less and broadly it is quite similar to each other. So let me start with optimization. So by definition, when I talk about optimization, the intent is to determine the actions to mitigate the risk by improving the product and processes and for assessing the effectiveness of those actions. So there are few key objectives which are defined in FMEA first edition with respect to optimization. So let me share that. So the first one is identification of actions which are necessary to reduce the risk and for increasing the customer satisfaction by improving the product and process design. The second one is about assigning the responsibility and target date for the actions. And the third one is for implementation and documentation of the action taken so the failure causes of occurrence can be reduced and how we can increase the ability to detect the failure cause and the failure mode. And after that comes the effectiveness monitoring that whatever actions that we have taken, what is the present effectiveness of that. And once effectiveness is being monitored, then we can see that what is the present status of the risk, whether it has increased, decreased or it has still remained the same. One very important thing is that whenever we are doing this uh, recommendation part, then it is a collaboration between the cross-functional team of the organization as well as all the other relevant interested parties including the customers. One very important thing to remember is that whenever we are thinking about the recommended action, then those actions should be implementable. It shouldn't happen that we just assign some actions and we are not very sure that whether they can be implemented or not. 
and we also need to take care that whatever actions that we are implementing it should not happen that those actions are already specified in the prevention or detection so they should be different from that or maybe they should be much more uh, new with respect to what we have already done in the processes and then apart from that another important thing is that whenever there is no requirement reduction we need to very clearly specify that no further action is needed with respect to that so that brings another dimension into it that how we have to see that uh, what should be the sequence of recommended action that we are taking that what thing should come first and what should thing come next later so the first and the most important thing is with respect to the failure effect so the organization needs to see that what are the design or process modification needs to be done so that either we can eliminate or we can mitigate a failure effect and once we can take care about that then the second thing is that what needs to be done with respect to reduction of the occurrence rating with respect to the failure cause and once that is being done then bring the third dimension that is about how we can increase the detection ability with respect to the failure cause or the failure mode one important thing to understand is that whenever we are doing any design or process modification so in that all the impacted design steps needs to be evaluated again and in case there is a concept modification then all the steps needs to be modified so once that is being done it's important to understand that how we can assign the responsibility and the target date with respect to all the recommended actions so the first thing which is important here is that each action should have a realistic target date and there should be an individual person who should be responsible for that and once we implement whatever actions that are being there on that basis then we need to see that uh, what is the effectiveness with respect to that now there can be some different stages with respect to whatever actions that we are taken so there can be five or six different stages with respect to that kind of action that we are taking the first thing is as simple as open that we have not defined any action because we may not be sure about it that what needs to be done the second is about decision pending that we have defined an action but we have not yet decided how to go about it the third can be implementation pending that also the action has been decided but still it is pending for approval and once we receive the approval maybe from top management or from the customer only then implementation can be done the fourth very simple and easy one is about completed that whatever actions that we have planned it has been implemented and the effectiveness can be demonstrated and the last one can be with respect to not implemented here the intent is that we have taken a decision not to implement it because maybe at the moment we don't have that kind of capability to implement or maybe we don't have that much of technical know how to implement that so once that is done it's important to assess the effectiveness of whatever actions that we have taken so again there can be many different steps with respect to that the first one is that it can be like this that maybe the action is not yet completed so till that time action is completed it should always remain in implementation pending the second important thing is that whatever is the reassessment it should be based on the effectiveness of the preventive and the detection actions which have been taken and once the actions are being taken on that basis we need to review our existing occurrence and the detection rating and based on the new occurrence and detection rating then we need to see that what is now the action priority maybe earlier it was high but now it has become medium or low or it can be other way around also and wherever we are not taking any action the action priority should always remain same one very important thing which is recommended is that we should always keep the severity occurrence and detection rating which was the first one always as a part of our history so that uh, maybe after quite some time we can always see that from where we started and where we are with respect to the original ranking which we gave when we started the fma process so this is all the key things with respect to the optimization as per fma first edition now let me share something with respect to recommended action which is fma fourth edition which is quite similar to the optimization so when we talk about recommended action the main focus is on prevention and not on detection and for that error proofing is considered to be the most important action that can be taken and the key intent is to reduce the ranking in the sequence of severity occurrence and detection so when we talk about how we can reduce the ranking of say severity occurrence and detection to start with severity the severity ranking can be reduced only with a design or a process revision and by determining that whether 
that particular thing is effectively implemented or not. When we talk about occurrence rating, so at that time our intent is to see that by removing or by reducing the cause of the failure mode, whether the occurrence rating can be reduced and maybe for that we can do some statistical study to understand its effectiveness. And we will talk about how to reduce the detection rating. So the best preferred method is by error proofing to understand that what are the dominant causes of the process variation or maybe the special causes which may be affecting that. Something similar to optimization here also the responsibility and the target date needs to be defined that who will be responsible for doing that particular action and what is the proposed target date with respect to that. And once the actions are being taken then based on that the severity, occurrence and detection ranking needs to be revised again so that we know that what is the new revised uh, severity, occurrence and detection rating. And based on that, maybe the RPN value will also change. So that also needs to be specified based on the revised actions. So these are the key differences between recommended action as per FMA fourth edition and optimization FMA first edition. Now to talk about some of the key challenges that industry is facing with respect to uh, this FMA recommended action part. The first one is how often we actually write any recommended action in the FMA that we are doing maybe for process or maybe for the design. We need to see that. And secondly, even if we are putting up any recommended action, how often we are actually reviewing and verifying that whether it is implemented or not and how often it is an input to the top management. So the top management knows that what actions are pending and what needs to be done so that we can avoid or we can mitigate those risks. So it's very important to understand that. So if I talk about what I covered, I started by talking about the seven key steps with respect to the FMEA process. Then after that, I talk about the failure chain. After that, I talk about severity, occurrence and detection rating, followed by how we can do the preventive and detection actions, then action priority. And then after that, I talked about key changes with respect to recommended action as per FMEA fourth edition and optimization as per FMEA first edition. My next video will again be in line with the FME series and that is about the structural analysis which is step 2 of the FME. Regularly I am getting a lot of feedback from your side and they are helping me to understand your expectations. So please do continue that. And in case you want to understand about this particular video in much more detail, if you see there is a link below, if you click that you will find a blog there and there you can understand particular, this particular video in much more detail. And in case you are liking these kind of videos and blog, you can always recommend to your friends and colleagues. And you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel and my website bhavimangla.com. Thank you.